be reunited shortly if he hasn't already with his wife, Meghan, baby Archie. All that following talks with the Queen of the future role of his family. His departure from the UK follows a speech in which he said the couple had no other option but to step back as senior royals. We're joined by Victoria Howard, who's the editor of the website, The Crown Chronicles. Victoria, welcome to you. Uh, can I start with a grubby journalistic question uh, about your about your website and to what extent this story the last fortnight is is driving traffic? Are people clicking? Absolutely. The people are really interested in Harry and Meghan as a couple. And with this drama that's unfolded, um, you know, it's just heightening that interest. So when Harry said the other night that he hoped this would be a more peaceful life for his family, I don't think he's quite counted on the, the interest and scrutiny that they're still going to get, even if they're in Canada. Yeah. How did you see that speech, Victoria? Because there was, there was a way of looking at it that said there was the Queen, in a, in a pretty unusual, even potentially unprecedented statement on the Friday evening, wishing them the very best and talking about Meghan being a valued member of the family, quite warm words. And that for many people, you know, the sovereign has spoken, that's where the matter rests. It's the punctuation mark, it's the full stop. And there would have been those who would have said, I'm, I'm going to guess that Harry's got to have his say here. And lo, he did, not in front of journalists who were putting questions to him, but on Instagram. Does that tell us anything? It does. I think this is probably indicative of the way forward that the Sussexes are trying to go and how they will communicate with us going forwards. So now, of course, they don't need to go through those official palace channels to be able to tell us what they want to. And also, they're not as restricted. You know, they're not in the palace confines to say, we want to give out, you know, we want to give our opinion, but the, the palace or courtiers are holding them back. So I really think this is going to be something that we see more regularly, you know, their own opinions, their own thoughts. Yeah. And they'll be doing it on their own terms, so probably through their social media channels. Well, it's interesting, isn't it? We've just been looking at President Trump giving a speech in Davos. It's not inconceivable, is it, uh, that, let's say, two, two and a half years from now, Trump's been re-elected, there's the midterm elections, and uh, one or, or both of them tweet something that's a little undiplomatic about Donald Trump, and suddenly you've got the White House complaining uh, to, the, to London, saying, you're head of state's grandson. You know, it starts to get messy. It could, but I think um, Harry is a little bit more level-headed than that. They are aware that they are also people of importance, even if they're not working royals. And it's key for them to not do anything that would reflect badly on the Queen. So I don't think we'll see anything too politicised in that regard. You know, there's not going to be slanging matches against anyone in particular, but they will be highlighting those potentially controversial causes, you know, climate change, gender equality, which can raise tensions and passions in people. But um, they are very, very keen to keep everything, you know, the status quo, in that they're not going to be um, making themselves political in that way. Yeah. Um I have to say, I've not seen any survey data on this. I'm not sure whether any has even been commissioned, but there is a strong sense, isn't there, that this is almost a proxy for other fronts of the, of the culture war, if I can put it that way, and that the nation divides, um, I'm not sure in what proportions, but between those four, Harry and Aginim, uh, slightly. Is that how you see it? I think that there has been a huge amount of um, tension and passions raised in this story along the way. And I think part of that is because this has never been done before. And with royals representing us, you know, we allow them to be in the position they're in, which in effect is like public office. Um, I think people felt quite disappointed that Harry had said, I don't want to represent you anymore. So I think that's where the, the tensions came in. But most people, at the, and there was some YouGov data that was commissioned for this, about half of the people completely agreed with them stepping down, um, but about three quarters of people with, uh, surveyed said they shouldn't receive public funding, and that's exactly what's happening. Um, it might raise William's profile. It you know might make him the, the more favoured brother in, in that regard, but I really don't think Harry and Meghan are going to be shrinking into the background. They're going to be championing some fantastic work and keeping their profile quite high in order to, to do that. Yeah. Victoria Howard is the editor of the website The Crown Chronicles. Uh, Victoria, appreciate your time today. Thanks very much.